Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM Defect Stadium model for today's second video. So uh, we're going 30 days slash 42 days out with the EC Extended. Um, looking at the possible weather for the next six weeks for, uh, for Europe and for the UK as well. So this is our Tuesday European Outlook. Please like, share, subscribe on videos. Thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. Thank you for tuning in as well, of course. Uh, the first video you see was our 7 a.m. upload. I got a sense of all team there with all of the regular features coming up for you later on. And if that wasn't, I've got a Christmas update number 9 being released later on today as well. So please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much to ECMDF.int for supplying the charts. Right, let's do it, shall we? Uh, we're going to start off with the week one mean sea level pressure. And not only from the 22nd to 29th of November, the uh, coming week will have above average heights, or this week, have above average heights in the Atlantic, extending up to Greenland. Uh, so mid-Atlantic ridge with a little bit of northern blocking, combined with a deep trough of low pressure covering many parts of the Europe, actually, especially the central, northern and east areas. That will bring unsettled weather to many parts of Europe. A jet stream is going down there somewhere, and it will also bring quite cold air, particularly to northern and western parts of Europe. The 500 millibar height starting from the North Pole view down looks like that. Again, showing that mid-Atlantic ridge, Extending through the Atlantic up towards Greenland. Trough of low pressure is across many parts of Europe, actually, under that trough. The jet stream is plunging southwards as well. So, temperature normally looks like that. Now, the southeast corner is still relatively mild. So, from Ukraine down to southern parts of Italy, anywhere east of that line, including much of the Balkans to the Black Sea, I mean, down to Greece and Turkey, we still have above average temperatures there. It is still milder than average. Elsewhere, it is significantly cooler than average, especially through much of Western Europe and particularly across northern Scandinavia. Really cold up there with the temperature anomaly going under 10 degrees below average in those deep, dark blue colours. Elsewhere, it's not as cold as that, but we are talking about sort of uh, 1 to 6 degrees below average quite widely across Western Europe, and even into the Mediterranean. Uh, you know, it's below average in many of these central and western parts of the Med, so Spain, Portugal, the, the central bowl of the Med, including the holiday islands of Corsica, Sardinia, Mallorca, Minorca, Ibiza. You know, all of those central Mediterranean areas are cooler than average. It's from Italy eastwards that uh, we pick up those milder than average temperatures. It also is uh, cold and average through France, through the low countries, through Germany, into much of Poland uh, as well. And uh, as I say, that does extend northwards into Scandinavia as well. Northeastern Europe, Latvia, Estonia, those areas aren't as cold. And then down this eastern side, I uh, say it is a little bit milder. Through there, uh, precipitation wise, uh, this week is uh, looking like this. So, pretty wet down in the May, cold and wet uh, through the May, certainly the central bowl of the May, anyway, to eastern parts of uh, Spain, though it is drier through uh, western Spain and also into Portugal. Uh, I guess wetter through Italy, of course, it's milder there, but there'll be some big thunderstorms going on, and also through the Adriatic over to the Balkans and down to southeastern Europe, Romania, uh, Greece, Turkey. Um, you know, those areas look wetter than ours. So generally, southern Europe looks quite wet. Conversely, much of northern Europe looks quite dry. So it does vary from area to area a little bit, but Scandinavian Peninsula is generally drier than average. Much of uh, Ireland and the UK drier than average. Many western parts of Europe looking a little bit drier than average through there. And uh, many gets wetter as we come northwards into the Black Sea. And of course, that's pushing up to cold air. So that could be snow. Generally, I think we say that the north and west of Europe is a little bit drier. Uh, or quite dry, and southern and southeastern Europe looks quite wet. Right, that's week one done. Moving through to week two, which will be the 29th of November to 6th of December. That's how we look. So we're starting to revert to a little bit more of a westerly across uh, Western Europe. Now, we still have this deep trough of low in with the mean cell pressure only for much of northern 
Europe, and I suspect that will still be pulling quite cold air in to the north. That cold air will probably be transferring eastwards with time as well, and maybe southeastwards. So I reckon this could be getting colder for more sort of eastern, southeastern areas. At the same time, they have this big ridge out to west. That's the Azores High, of course. That's going back towards the Azores, and so we'll be starting to pull in something just a little bit milder, I would have thought, into western parts of Europe there as we go into the beginning of December. The uh, 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. So it's still a little bit of a northwest south east line to jet stream, actually. Uh, the above average height sort of to our uh, west and southwest. But you see where this trough is digging through, still a bit of a northwest south east line to jet stream. I think we're probably pushing the cold air further east was, and I do think that like for the west of France, Ireland and the UK, but it's probably turning milder. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. There we see it. So it is beginning to go a little bit milder in the far west. Ireland begins to go a little bit milder. Parts of Wales and southwest England are going a little bit milder. Western France down to northern Spain and Portugal turning milder than average. Still cold now across Scandi. Scandinavia still colder than average, as is Germany and Poland. And you see the cold rate is beginning to progress through the Med, uh, affecting Italy now. And also over the Adriatic in towards the Balkans. Going to go a little bit cold there. The extreme east of Europe, and we were talking about Ukraine eastwards, uh, coming out milder than average, however. Still pretty mild, still pretty warm through Greece and Turkey. It looks exceptionally mild across southern parts of Russia, doesn't it? And also into western Russia as well. So, mild air is being pushed eastwards, cold air is being pushed eastwards, and the far west is beginning to get a little bit milder in uh, week two. The precipitation anomaly looks like that, turning wetter in many areas. Still pretty dry in the southwest, Spain and Portugal to search wild men looking quite dry. Elsewhere, just generally turning more. And said, of course, where we've got these colder than average temperatures through here, you know, we have to factor in that there is likely to be snow in those uh, sort of western and increasingly to central parts of Europe. Eastern Europe, um, some of that will be rain, so it might be so if the air is cold enough, although it is more than average. And out west, this is going to be primarily rain for France, UK, Ireland, as the temperature is beginning to pick up. Right, week three will be the 6th through to 13th of December. How's it looking? It looks like we're going flat westerly. Although we are weakening the scene a little bit, but we've got low pressure here through the Norway Sea, from Greenland to Scandinavia. We've got high pressure uh, through there. So it just looks like we're probably reverting to more of a westerly zonal type flow in week three the 500 millibar height normally suggests back to i think well average heights up here above average heights through there winds in from the west you expect this to be a milder week across much of northern west europe let's have a look there we go so uh, we lose those cold and average temperature anomalies mostly although the med is still looking quite cool northern parts of scandinavia still look quite cool as do greenland and iceland but uh, western europe is going milder especially through northern france into the uk and ireland and through the low countries belgium holland netherlands denmark also southern norway and much of Germany uh, forecast to be milder than normal. Still very mild over on the extreme eastern side of Europe uh, into western parts of Russia as well. And then these areas just here uh, have no signal or are average. Probably we're just seeing the, the colder air beginning to drain away a little bit. Uh, weakening signals for precipitation, as always, by the third week. But uh, we do clearly see that it is still looking pretty wet across northern and western Europe. So that's where all of the low pressure is. With the jet stream bringing low, you know, bring bouts of rain with areas of low pressure off the Atlantic. Meanwhile, the Azores high ridges into the Mediterranean. And that brings dry weather to much of southern Europe. Right, week four will be the 13th to the 20th of December. More changes, but it is quite a weak signal. However, it appears high pressure is developing across sort of Western Europe. There'll probably be low pressure in the jet stream up there, I would have thought. And maybe some lower pressure down there. 
as I say, by the time you get through the week four, we do have weakening signals. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. So just suggesting quite a big ridge there building in from the Atlantic into much of northern and western Europe. The jet stream is probably going to be going up there. And I would have thought some lower pressure slightly down across southern parts of Europe. Temperature anomalies look like that. So beginning to cool down under that area of high pressure. Still a bit above average from Scandinavia. Still quite mild across the far eastern side of Europe. And a little bit colder than average down here across southern and southwest Europe. Otherwise, you have a great big swathe where it's uh, either average or has no signal. As as we get, you know, the signal gets weaker, the further out we go. Precipitation-wise, it is quite a weak signal. But it does look dry across western Europe, I have to say. So, again, we've got the low countries, northern France, Ireland and the UK looking pretty dry. Some parts of eastern Europe look quite dry. A little bit wetter up here, so that's where you're going to have some low pressure there. And uh, we've got Spain and Portugal looking dry. That indicates that the Azores High is still in business. Otherwise, you know, quite weak signals. Right, so that's the 30 day look ahead done. Let's just extend out to weeks five and six uh, while we're here because why not? The charts are there, so might as well. Let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Uh, might we? So, uh, week five will be the 20th, 27th of December. Um, right, so with this week, we've got high pressure sitting pretty much over the UK, but inching its way northwards towards Iceland. It could be starting to bring something a little bit colder in, I think, across northern and uh, western Europe. I would not be surprised. Low pressure is down here, indicating, you know, the NEO is going negative as well. Oh, the pressure does extend back towards some green as well, by the way. Um, so, yeah, that might be starting to turn a little bit colder across the north and west of Europe. But we've also got some high pressure here across eastern Europe. I assume that will be probably a relatively warm ridge. Pulling up milder air from the south. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly. It looks like that. So just generally placing that high pressure across West Europe. So that doesn't look quite as good, actually, for coal. That will tend to bring coal rate into northern, northeastern Europe, though, perhaps. So not quite so good for western parts of Europe. But I expect under the ridge, it probably is quite cold anyway from frost and fog. The uh, temperature anomaly is really, really weak by this point, so no particular signal. Clearly, it's mild out in the Atlantic, but through most parts of Europe, um, you know, all the way to Western Russia, really, there's not much of a signal going on. Uh, is there? It does look a little bit cooler in the southeast of Europe, so maybe, maybe my interpretation of that uh, general setup was wrong. Might have been. Uh, precipitation wise, again, very weak signals as always by this point, just looks rather dry really with high pressure, particularly across these western parts of Europe and also in the east and the south of Europe. It's going to be some low pressure somewhere though, so uh, I expect the model is getting, the, getting, getting a strong signal for the ridges, but the troughs, and of course where the troughs and ridges are, that makes a difference to who's getting cold weather, who's getting the mild weather. Uh, lastly, we've got week six, will be the 27th of uh, December to the 3rd of January. Uh, and the ECM website's running slow at this point. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There we go. We're perhaps never going to get to find out what it's showing there. Data unavailable. It's done it to me, hasn't it? I bet there's a lot of people trying to access this right now. Let's have another go. There we go. Uh, mean sea level pressure anomaly for week six looking like that. I'm just going to put in some question marks, I think, because it's not really clear what's going on. Other than we've got low pressure down here. Now, if you've got low pressure around Spain, that, again, does imply you've got a negative uh, NAO going on. So where's the Azores High? The Azores High is probably going to be pulled over there somewhere, displaced to west and southwest. Could be ridging northwards as well, I suppose. Um, but if you've got low pressure here, that would imply like a, a negative NEO. So that could be cold, depending on if we've got some blocking, which the model, of course, does not show. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. Let's hope this will load up. It might not do. <laughs> Oh, gosh, your website's running very, very slowly tonight, isn't it? 
Just talk amongst yourselves, everyone, whilst we try to get these charts loaded up. No, it's not having it, is it? it really is not having it. There we go. There's the 500 millibar height anomaly for week six. Now, that looks quite interesting. That's got high pressure centered around Iceland. So if we think we've got uh, above average height, it's got some high pressure around Iceland. And we've got low pressure around Spain, which we know we have from the mean silver pressure anomaly. Then that's like a cold scenario to much of northern Europe, possibly bringing northerly or even easterly winds. So looking quite interesting by New Year with um, with that. The uh, temperature anomaly again shows no particular signal. And finally, let's hope it does it. Precipitation anomalies are also. Uh, I suspect will show no particular signal, probably. They show that it's dry to the north, though. Uh, so dry up there around Iceland to the north of Scotland, wet down here. That all looks like a negative NEO type thing setting up around uh, the new year. So, uh, yeah, I reckon that temperature was a little bit overdone. I would expect things, if the mean cell pressure and 500 millibar height only came off, I would expect things to be quite a lot colder across uh, northern Europe. If that uh, 500 millibar height anomaly verified with that mean cell pressure anomaly. As it is all like uh, six weeks away, it's not really worth being all that worried about it. But some quite interesting trains here anyway. So we're starting off cold across many parts of Europe at the moment. Things will get a little bit milder and uh, more unsettled through the first half of December. Then it looks like we go to something uh, drier, probably colder and more anti-cyclonic for the second half of December. And then around Christmas to New Year, uh, maybe we start getting things properly cold uh, with a negative NAO type pattern setting up. But, of course, that's a very long way off. Right, OK, that's it for your EC 30-day uh, slash 42-day look ahead. We shall be back later on with uh, your attention uh, to 14 day. And don't forget, we've got another Christmas update coming up for your update number nine uh, later on as well. For this week's EC 30-day forecast, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.